good day to you. Wherever you are, we just praise God for our amen corner out there. We don't really have media church. We have our amen corner. It's about the same thing because it's through media we reach who we reach uh, for those who aren't close enough to attend here at Crossway Church in Queen City, Texas. But we call uh, what's normally called the media church membership, our Amen Corner, and we thank God for all of you who participate here through the media, Avenue of Media, uh, you praying for us and sending messages and, and even getting to know some of the people in the church through social media, such as Facebook and other avenues maybe, uh, and, and you're giving to Crossway Church. We're so thankful for each penny that each person gives to carry out the work of God here and and, and to be able to uh, publish the gospel of the Lord Jesus Christ, and which is written on it, really every page of our Bibles. And we're just so thankful for all of you and all, all of your help. You know, we send eight expositor study Bibles into the prison system every week. That's every week. And that's uh, quite a chunk of cash for, uh, you know, a small ministry is ours. But we have uh, the people who give and support that. And we're so thankful that we, we're able to uh, get those Bibles. Let me just show you the, the stack that we presently have because they seem to be coming in now mighty, mighty good. And so these are all the letters that we uh have on file right now they write us from prison and they ask for the expositor study bible and we have literally sent as of last week 1970 something bibles since we began and uh, so we 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 honor the lord and we honor their request as we send it to them but it, again it takes quite a chunk of money and so we thank God for every penny that comes in for that. And, uh, and the, we know the Lord will increase it as he has increased it even up till this time as far as the amount of Bibles we send into the prison system. So we're thankful to be able to send God's Word and especially the Expositor Study Bible because it is uh, one of those study Bibles. It, it is the best study Bible on the planet. It's simply because... All the notes in that study Bible point us to the very context that the Bible is written in, and that's the cross of Jesus Christ. If it, you know the way the the Lord writes His words in our hearts and minds, as He said He would under the new covenant, the, uh, He He has he, the only avenue He has to do that. Is through the blood of Jesus. He saves us through the blood. He imparts the word of God through our faith in the sacrifice, the blood of Jesus. And outside of that avenue, there is no impartation of God's word. So our, we must have our minds set on the Lord, which means set on Christ, which means set on what he did for us at Calvary. Hallelujah. Then the Holy Spirit will teach us the, the rest of the words of life and, and bring the very uh, experience of the, the words of God that we need in our individual lives for this journey that we're on. And I'm just glad to be on this journey with my Lord. Uh, today we are in Hebrews chapter 11. This is part five of this 11th chapter here on the 20th day of June 2022. And I'm excited about what we're reading here, especially now that the Lord has been able to bring us back to the cross, our first love, back to the place we can hear and receive properly, back to the place where we're literally walking in the life we have in Christ, walking in the faith, laying hold on this eternal life through faith in the sacrifice of Christ. How wonderful it is to now grab our Bibles and gather around the Word of God and, and, and see what the Lord would say to us today, how precious that is. You see, if we're still going along like the church has been going along all these years and there's more problems in the church now than ever before, more divorce, more church splits, more uh, just m more trouble uh, than ever before, then uh, we've got to accept God's answer that will bring us up out of all of that. 
and tear the walls of division down and bring us together. There's not but one message that can do that. And that it's not some certain message on a certain time. No, it's one message. The message of the cross is what saves us. It's what allows the Lord to guide us along the way uh, as his saved children of God. So uh, I'm just thankful now to be learning the word of God all, <clears throat> excuse me, over again in the true light it was written in. Jesus said he's the light. The word of God is is the light, but the Bible also says that the Lamb is the light. And we'd say, well, which one is it? Is it Christ? Is it the written words or is it the Lamb? Well, it's all they're all tied in together and they cannot be separated. Jesus Christ is the living word of God. And the the way that the living word of God is applied to our hearts is through our faith in the Lamb of God. The word of God written has to always be in the context of and pointing to Jesus Christ, the living word of God, and what he did as the Lamb of God. You separate those three and you've got confusion and you've got just uh, you, just confusion and you don't really know what to do. But when you allow the Holy Spirit to bring those three together and to keep those three together, then you will have clarity and confusion will go out the window. Amen. Hebrews 11 verse 4 again today. Uh, we were here in the last session. And we need to talk more about this because the story mentioned here in verse 4 about Abel and Cain is the story of all humanity. It's the story of every human being who's ever lived. We either as human beings uh, offer to God what he has offered to us and really all we can do is offer the fruit to God of what he's offered us and Abel did that. How, why did Abel do that? I believe, I believe it's this simple. Abel believed God. Abel knew God. You know God by believing in that which God offers you. John 17, 3 says, This is eternal life, that, that, that they know the one true God. And his son, the Lord Jesus Christ, whom he sent. No one knows God outside of Jesus Christ and his way of the sacrifice. Paul said there's a lot of Jesus be taught. A lot of gospels that are not gospels being taught uh, by other spirits and all that mess. Is, the church is full of all that stuff. But there's really one gospel, one Lord, Jesus Christ, and, and he, he had one perfect sacrifice for all. So uh, this story of, of Cain and Abel, let's look at it again this morning for a few minutes, and we might move on, we might not. But Cain and Abel, again, never forget this. Th this is the story of all of humanity. When we fell into sin in the Garden of Eden, God came running after us, my friends. We didn't go running after him. Matter of fact, we hid ourselves when he came running for us. Why? Because we were now sinners. Sinners hide from God. Sinners run from God until they're born again, and then they run after God. See, we, 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 once we're born again, the rest of our lives, if we walk in the faith, run the race that was set before us, and, and we continue to learn the words of our Lord Jesus Christ, we'll be found every day attempting to apprehend that which apprehended us. When we stop running after the Lord, that means now we're running after something carnally and fleshly. Anybody, anywhere on the planet, preacher, mama, daddy, husband, it don't matter how long they've sat on that pew. If they're not running hard after God, it means they're running hard after something carnally. And, and this story of Cain and Abel Abel brings to God, listen carefully, the fruit of that which he had accepted that God offered him. God came running after Adam and Eve when they sinned, we sinned, and he offered to all of us a promise, the promise, the only promise of a Redeemer. 
that would come and crush the head of the enemy, though his heel would be bruised. That's the story of Calvary. And then God uh, took and showed them how that would actually come about by killing an, a lamb or an animal or a whatever the animal was. More than likely, it was a lamb because that whole scene was symbolic of a Savior, a Redeemer coming, and as a lamb would lay his life down, and those that believed upon him, like you and me, he would robe us in his robe of righteousness, that garment of righteousness, his righteousness. But in that day, it was a verbal promise giving of a Savior coming, and God said, hold it right there. It's not just a promise by word. This is how it's going to happen. And God took care of the animal sacrifice, and I don't know if he did the priestly duty and what he did. The Bible doesn't tell us, but what it does tell us is that the shedding of blood took place of animals, and he, God took the skins and made coats for Adam and Eve because the, the, they tried to cover their own nakedness caused by sin, and shame, and all that with fig leaves. And God said, no, 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 that's your covering. My covering is the covering that comes through your faith in the sacrifice that I offer. So when Cain and Abel come to the place of sacrifice, we might as well admit it this morning. Cain didn't know God. Just because God speaks to you don't mean you know him. Cain was an unbeliever. Cain had his faith in himself. Cain, Cain knew to do what, right. He knew what it was. He'd been told what it was. He, he knew what it was because he, he came to the altar, but when he came to the altar, he didn't bring the fruit of that which had been offered to him. Get that? You and I, every day of our lives, we live in a way. I, let me say that again. We live in a way. I'm not talking about a moment here and a moment there. We walk moment by moment. No, we don't get it right all the time. There's no such thing as perfection. But we don't let that comment right there keep us in a paralyzed place of just staying there, of imperfection. We walk following our Savior, though imperfect, we're following Him. He's perfect. His way is perfect. The faith He's given us measured out to us, that faith is perfect. We're not perfect, but the faith that we have is perfect because it's the faith of the Mm, the faith of the Son of God who loved us and gave Himself for us. That faith is perfect. We've been given the measure of that faith by which we live. But, and we have to exercise that faith. We must exercise that faith. And Cain and Abel really never forget this. This is so just overwhelmingly uh, enlightening that every day, of every human being's life, they're really offering to God something. Every human being is offering to God, even those that claim they're atheists. There's no such thing as atheist. There's no such thing. There's fools, God says, that claim there's no God, but that's just because they're rebelling and kicking against the one they say doesn't even believe. So, but... Cain brought to serve God an offering, but it was that of his own doing. His own, it wasn't blood that God offered them for redemption. It wasn't the, the way of sacrifice that God offered them. <coughs> mm, sorry, excuse me. It wasn't what we have to offer the fruit of what God has offered us pertaining to redemption. Now, now get that. that that's, that's very key. We can't just offer God anything. The prayers we offer God must be in spirit and in truth. That means through faith in the sacrifice of Christ. And what we're learning now, as far as me and myself and our folk who, who, who are learning the truth through this ministry, is that it's not some blanket statement of being born again 
which we're saved by the blood of Jesus. Hallelujah. But it, it's not, well, of course we believe that. Well, we know, that's all we've ever believed. All those statements. But that's actually, most of the time, if you're not careful, that's you won't be found trusting in that, Partici co-participating in in the death of Jesus. We're learning that just now for those who have, have, have come on board with the message of the cross, allowed the Lord to bring them back to a focus of Calvary and, a, and, a, and, 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 and seeing that every jot and tittle can only be understood through the blood of Jesus, imparted through the blood of Jesus. Amen. It doesn't matter what other people say. We've got Bibles that we, we can see it plainly in, and I'm excited about that. God has one way. It's the way of redemption. Outside of that at work in our lives, it's sin. That ought to drive us to our knees right there. Anything that's not of faith is sin. Romans 14, 23. And, 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 and 1 John chapter 5 tells us, all unrighteousness is sin. Well, of course it is because it, the faith we live by is the faith of the Son of God. It comes by hearing and hearing by the Word of God, and we're hearing properly if, if the faith comes through righteousness. That means through way of the cross. The only avenue for faith to come into our hearts is not our physical ears hearing the Word. It's our hearts believing under righteousness, not just to be born again and the mouth begins to declare it. It's when our hearts believe under righteousness because our hearts are still trusting in God's redemptive plan. Yes, we're already saved. One of the biggest lies of the devil is that we don't need to look at Calvary, think about Calvary. We don't need to talk about the cross. It was the power of God to get saved. But, and if he can get you to believe that, then, he's, then he, the devil,'s got you looking for another avenue through which the power comes. Now, I've been there. I know what I'm talking about. For years, I was there. And 90-something percent of the church is there now. So, when every, let's think about this. Every human being on the planet today, in spite of their awareness of it or not, is offering to God something because we're his creation. <laughs> and every human being comes onto the scene in this world, servants. We're servants. It don't matter if you say you're not a servant. You are. It doesn't matter if you say there's not a God. There is. It doesn't matter if you say you have three heads. You don't. It doesn't matter what you say or what you think. Outside of the Word of God, everything is sin. Because faith only comes by hearing and hearing by the Word of God. And everything that's not faith, that's not a faith, is sin. You get that. So outside the boundaries of God's Word... And our functioning according to God's word is sin. It's sin. Amen. It's sin. Well, don't, don't send me emails after the broadcast and say, well, the, uh, God's word doesn't tell me what color shoes to wear. Am, am, am I living in sin? Because I, you know, so we get silliness. We get foolishness. We're talking about spiritual things. We're talking about the fruit of redemption or the fruit of ourselves every day. Every day of our lives, every human being, and the Bible teaches there's only two avenues of service. And every human being is serving. Every human being is under a leader. I don't care if we want to be or not. We are. Every one of them. Who do you think was guiding Cain? The evil one. Who do you think was behind Cain's resistance to the way of God's redemption plan? Well, Satan was. Satan's always behind and involved in everything. And I said this in yesterday's ser sermon. It was so powerful as it came out. Everything Satan is involved in is what God is resisting. If God is resisting anything, Satan can function in it. And that's very important. You know this. God resists the proud... And the proud is not the business owner who thinks he's got more money than everybody and better than everybody. That is pride. But pride, in God's view, is any, anybody at any time who's not trusting 
in his redemptive plan. Come on now, I'm just telling you what the Bible teaches. Any pride is, is any, anybody at any time not trusting in the cross of Christ. It's pride. And God resists it. And what God resists, the devil can function in. Because he, whatever God resists, the devil sees that. The devil sees what God resists. And he gets all involved in it. So when Cain made the choice, I'm not bringing blood. I'm not bring. I'm not killing an animal and shedding its blood and bringing it. You know, I, I can. I can do this myself. The works of my hands are as good as what my brother Abel's doing. But see, that wasn't true. The work of Abel was a work of faith. In God, giving to God the fruit of what God had already offered to him. You see, God's only looking for the fruit of what he's offered all of humanity, and that's the fruit of knowing him through faith in his son and what he did on Calvary's cross. Everything else is a manifestation of of I don't really know God, or if I did get born again and now I'm trusting in all these fads that have crept into the church under the guise of, of uh, helps, but they're not. They're distractions from the one way God saves, delivers, and walks with his people in that light. Then things are going to be horribly wrong. But we can. every human being today is offering God even the ones that are don't know they are because we're here to serve and we're serving even if we say I'm free I'm not serving anybody you're serving then at that point more than ever before because we're either serving the sin nature that we came into this life dead in our sins and trespasses dominated by the sin nature that became manifest in the Garden of Eden when we disobeyed God, or we can be born again through faith in Christ, and now we can obey, we can serve obedience. This is the obedience of Christ under righteousness. But everybody's serving. Everybody is serving, even those that think they're more free than everybody. I ain't serving nobody. They're serving their self. And self-servitude is where Satan has the greatest dominion of all. That's what got us into the boat that we're in now as humanity. That's why God had to become a man and come to this earth in the person of his son and lay his life down because of self-servitude. I'll do what I want, when I want, with who I want, where I want, and how I want and when I want. It's all about me. That was Cain. He, I'm not giving to God the, the fruit of that which he spoke about. I've, I heard, but I, I'm bringing the works of my own hands. And when we trust in our own works, God rejects it. I don't care how good it looks to the community. I don't care if it's orphans being fed or widows being cared for. Or I don't care what it is. Those things that look good among men can be very evil in the eyes of God because the only place God, the one true God, sees good is through his son, Jesus Christ. If it, it, Whatever's happening outside of faith in Christ is evil to him, <laughs> evil to him, and rejected by him, opposed, resisted by him, and all of that is the devil's ground. And this is the story. Cain and Abel's the story of every human being who's ever lived. We either come on the scene and at some point we realize as we hear the gospel, we're sinners in need of a Savior and we offer our hearts to God in believing unto His righteousness. Amen. Or we say, I've got this. At least I'm not as bad as them and I'm sure not as bad as them. I may not be as good as them, but I'm not as bad as them. And, and we live this life on some kind of balance scales uh, and they're unjust. The only 
just scales is that which Christ and him crucified is on one side. And when we look at that, we see how off balance and how much we've missed the mark. And if we're not looking at that, if we're rejecting that, then we've got unjust scales that aren't going to be leveled out right, and it's, and it, it's not going to be good for us. Amen. So I wanted to read. I wanted to get into this more today because uh, Abel received a good uh, report, a witness that he was righteous. There's no righteousness offered by God except through that sacrifice he offered. It was there under the old covenant, fulfilled in Christ in the new covenant in His blood. Outside of this way of Christ and the cross, there's nothing but sin. I want you to hear me. That's why all these distractions and fads that creep into the church by these creepers that Jude wrote about, it's all sinful. Even if it has an appearance, even if we throw scripture at it to make it feel like it's right. See, that's what, that's what the devil does. He, he tries to stamp Scripture on everything. But if it's not Scripture pointing to Calvary, my friend, it's sin. You can use the Bible to be bound in sin. You can use the Bible in some legalistic letter of the law way. The Bible will chew you up and spit you out. The Bible, God's Word, is a two-edged sword, and it will either be found uh, molding you and shaping you into the person of the Lord Jesus Christ by being made conformable unto His death, or it'll be shaving the very life of you away. The Word of God can be a light, but if we don't see it in its proper context... We can walk, quote, more scripture in a greater darkness that man has ever known. I want you to know that. There was once, and I, I've got two or three minutes, and I want to tell this little story as the Lord reminds me of it right now concerning this, what we're talking about. And I won't get into all the details. They were so so horribly, but there was someone who was renting a, a, a rent place, uh, from the people that I worked for at one time, and I was given the job of going and dealing when they wouldn't pay the rent and things of that tending to the renters. And, 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 and this person wouldn't pay the rent. I had to go. They wouldn't give me the rent. I had to do this. I had to do that. And, and, and finally, the, the, the person ended up going to the penitentiary. And this person was one that was on, was on drugs, hard drugs. And, and just, oh my goodness, it was one of the most saddest things you'll ever see. And, 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 and this person had kids. And, and the, but, of course, the kids weren't there. They, they, they couldn't raise them. And their lives were just, oh, it was, oh, just to look at this person was such a frightening thing to see. And, but this person claimed Christianity. And I'm not the judge, and I'm not going to say yay or nay. I know Christians can be backslidden and far away from God. I know that God's people can end up in a pig pen, and, 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 and I understand that. So I'm not the judge. But what I'm telling you today is when this person ended up going to the penitentiary and we had to go in and clean the house out, the house was full of spiritual books, biblically directed, biblical written books, spiritual books, full of, the house was full of it, had the Word of God everywhere, but it didn't do any good. There was no chain-breaking, yoke-destroying power there. Even though Scripture could be quoted, the house was full of Scriptures, full of Scriptures, but there was no chain-breaking, yoke-destroying truth being found in the heart. And my friend, that chain-breaking, yoke-destroying, anointing, the Bible says is the truth, and Jesus is the anointed one who is the truth, but it's only what he did at Calvary that can break the chains and destroy the yoke. It's not quoting a lot of Scripture. The devil's good at it. He did it to Jesus, but Jesus brought it to its context every single time and the devil finally fleed. But I want to get back to this as I close. Every human being that's ever lived has offered their maker something every day, in spite of their awareness of it or not. 
We either offer to God, well, I'm doing this, I'm doing that, I'm not as bad as them. God, at least I'm, if there's anybody out there, to the man upstairs, we, all these things. We, every human being is serving today, right now at this moment, serving the sin nature that's unto death, the fruit of death, or obedience unto righteousness. That scene right there. Right there at Cain and Abel. Abel, get this, Abel offered to God the fruit of the promise God had offered to him. It has not changed, my friend. On this day, today, you and I will either walk in the faith, live by the faith of the Lord Jesus Christ that loved us and gave himself for us, and I mean a co-participation by faith in the death of Jesus, the fruit of Calvary, the fruit of Christ, the fruit of the Spirit, the fruit of the cross. If we're being made conformable to the death of Jesus, then God is looking for the fruit of the death of Jesus, which is what? Resurrection power in life that always gravitates back to where the power comes from, being the death of Jesus, that which we're being made conformable to in this life on this journey. You get away from that, my friend. God's resisting you. And more than likely, just as in my past, when God was opposing all that I tried to trust in other than the cross, I was rebuking the devil, but it was God resisting me. I was rebuking the devil, but it was God resisting me. God resists every single thing, every single thing that's not the result of faith in the sacrifice of his son. It's been a great broadcast today. This is the last broadcast for this week, and I won't be back uh, doing uh, the Hebrew teaching or the Friday teaching until next week. This is the last broadcast for this week. We're going to Ohio this weekend uh, to minister all weekend there in Toledo. So if you're anywhere near Toledo, Ohio this coming weekend, Friday night starting at 7. Sunday, Saturday morning at 10, Saturday night, and then Sunday morning there at Pastors James and Michelle Rieger's church there in Toledo. I look forward to seeing uh, uh, those that I know and making new friends with those that we've not met yet as we just praise and worship our faithful Lord and hear the wonderful words of His life and His liberty that He's promised us. So, uh, uh, just pray for us. We're praying for you. Don't forget to look at the website. Click on the store. There's new materials there, commentaries that I've written there for our helps, our edification along the way. And I know the Lord will use them to get your direction focused on where it should be. And don't forget, if you want to give to the ministry, you can do that there on the website or you can simply text the word GIVE to the number 903-231-5950. God bless you. We love you. We'll see you next time. Until then, stay tuned determined to know absolutely nothing but Christ and Him crucified. We'll see you then. God bless you.